Hey physical science students, uh, in today's lecture we're going to talk about uh, thermal energy calculations. Um, so before we get started we need to um, remind ourselves of what equations we have to work with. So first of all we know that thermal energy or the change in thermal energy, that's what the triangle means, is equal to the mass of a substance, how much of it you have, times the change in temperature of that substance, how much it heats up or cools down, times the specific heat of that substance. So again, this is change in thermal energy equals mass times change in temperature times specific heat or heat capacity. Um, so that's uh, for calculating the change in energy of one substance. And then we also have mixing problems where you mix two substances together. Um, and we know that the change in thermal energy of uh, one substance equals the change in thermal energy of the other substance. In other words, whatever heat object one loses um, has to be gained by another object. So as long as we're talking about one system, um, whatever is lost by one object is gained by one uh, another object. This is just the law of conservation of energy. And so if we put this uh, this part of the equation in here, then we can say that the mass times the change in temperature times the sp specific heat of substance 1, so I'll say M1 change in T1 and C1, has to be equal to the mass times the change in temperature times the specific heat of substance 2. All right, finally, there's one other useful uh, equation. If you're talking about mixing the same substance together, for example, uh, two different samples of water that have the same specific heat, or if you're mixing uh, two different samples of vegetable oil and both samples have the same specific heat, then uh, this uh, specific heat actually doesn't need to be considered then, and it's simply mass times change in temperature of one sample equals the mass times the change in temperature of the other. Again, this is only true if both substances involved have the same specific heat. All right, now on to some practice problems. What is the total thermal energy change of a 3.5 kilogram chunk of graphite that changes from 20 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius? The specific heat of carbon, which uh, by the way graphite is carbon, is 710, and they didn't put units in that, it's joules per gram per degree Celsius. So it takes 710 joules of energy to heat one gram of graphite by one degree Celsius. So I'm going to start, as I think you guys always should, by writing down my formula. The change in thermal energy equals mass times change in temperature times specific heat. This, if you always write that down, it's going to keep you from making mistakes. Now I have to identify what I know and put it in the correct place in the equation. So remember, they're asking for what is the total thermal energy change? So what I don't know is Q. However, they did give me the mass. There's M, 3.5 kilograms. And they gave me enough to find the change in temperature, 20 degrees to 100 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to start by saying change in temperature equals 100 minus 20 equals 80 degrees Celsius. That's the change in temperature. And now I'm going to plug everything into my equation. Change in thermal energy equals mass, which is 3.5 kilograms, times the change in temperature, which was 80 degrees Celsius, times the specific heat of carbon, which is 710 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And I'm going to punch that into my calculator. 3.5 times 80 times 710. So the change in thermal energy is going to be equal to 198,800 joules. Okay, and I'm done with this problem. Again, why does it equal a joule? I'm taking uh, kilograms times the change in temperature uh, times joules per uh, oh, and sorry, here's where I'm wrong here. This is joules per kilogram. 
per degree Celsius. So uh, times joules all over kilograms times uh, degree Celsius, which is a temperature. So this should be C. So kilograms cross out, temperature crosses out, and I'm simply left with joules. All right, next problem. There is a total thermal energy change of 53,250 joules when a 1.5 kilogram chunk of graphite heats from 20 degrees to 70 degrees Celsius. What is the specific heat of graphite? So again, I'm going to start by writing out my equation. But now I realize this one's a little bit different. It's not asking me for the thermal energy. It gave me the thermal energy change. So the thermal energy change is 53,250 joules. That's Q. This is mass, 1.5 kilograms. And here's my change in temperature. So 70 minus 20 equals 50 uh, degrees Celsius of the temperature change. The change in thermal energy is 53,000. 250 joules is equal to the mass 1.5 kilograms times the change in temperature which was 50 degrees Celsius times specific heat. So now I'm going to multiply that tr through 53,250 equals 1.5 times 5075 times the specific heat and now I can divide both sides by 75 that cancels 53,250 divided by 75 is 710. So my answer is the specific heat of graphite is 710 and this is joules per kilogram and that's because this is in kilograms per degree Celsius. All right, now let's try a mixing problem. You mix 100 milliliters of 70 degree water with 150 milliliters of a different water source, and the mixture then reaches a temperature of 75 degrees. What was the temperature of the second water source? So first of all, um, my equation is uh, the change in thermal energy of one substance equals the change in thermal energy of the second substance which means that the mass times the change in temperature times specific heat of one equals the mass times change in temperature times specific heat of the other. Um, because it's two samples of water, their specific heats are the same, so all I have to do is use this. Mass times change in temperature equals mass times change in temperature. So let's look at uh, water source one. Mass of 100 milliliters of water, because the density of water is one gram per milliliter, is just 100 grams. Um, at times the change in temperature. But what's the change in temperature of this first water source? Remember, it starts at 70 degrees and it finishes at 75 degrees. So the change in temperature is 5 degrees, 75 minus 5. And that equals the mass, which is 150 grams of water. Remember, that's because water weighs 1 gram per milliliter times the change in temperature of that water source. And that's what they want to know. How much does its temperature change by? So I say 100 times 5 equals 500, which equals 150, times the change in temperature. I divide both sides by 150. That cancels, and I get 500 divided by 150 equals 3.33. So, while the 100 milliliters of water heats up by 5 degrees, uh, the second sample of water will cool off by 3.33 degrees. And that makes sense. The larger sample of water, the 150 milliliter sample, has a smaller change in temperature than the smaller uh, batch of water. So this is degrees Celsius. Hey guys, uh, my video ran just a little bit long to be able to fit onto YouTube. It's about 18 minutes long. So I'm going to split it into two pieces. So um, to finish the video, view thermal energy calculations part two.